Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us see how to differentiate the drug suffixes with little difference in easy way. In the pharmacology, we come across with so many types of drugs and few of the drugs look similar when we are going to see their suffix. But we can observe a small difference between these drugs in view of their mechanism, drug targets or clinical uses. So today in this video, we will discuss the different types of examples and how we can differentiate these suffixes in easy way. So let us see if you have the drugs. Etorvastatin, this is a well-known drug. Similarly, silastatin, simvastatin, lovastatin. All these are the different types of drugs which are having a common suffix statin. And these drugs are well familiar with their suffix. Statins are one type of drug which are going to inhibit the HMG coa reductase enzyme. Thereby, they are used as anti-hyperlipidemic acids. But within this list, we can observe one of the drug which is somewhat different and is not related to the anti-hyperlipidemic action. So that is nothing but the silastatin. This silastatin is different from the other statins we have listed here. Now here, etorvastatin, simvastatin and lovastatin are one type of drugs and silastatin is a different type of drug. Here, these three drugs are mainly used as anti-hyperlipidemics and all we have discussed, they are going to inhibit the HMG coa reductase enzyme. Thereby, they decrease the LDL cholesterol. On the other hand, silastatin is one of the renal dehydropeptidase enzyme inhibitor. And this drug is going to inhibit the metabolism of the, one of the beta-lactam antibiotic, imipenum. So, this drug can be combined with the imipenum to increase its bioavailability. But here, all these are having the similar suffix, then how we can differentiate? So, here if we carefully observe, the first three drugs are having the suffix vastatin. So whenever they are having the vastatin, they are the HMG coreductase inhibitors and they are used as anti-hyperlipidemics. And when the drug is having only statin, it is a renal dehydropeptidase inhibitor, which is used along with the imipenum. In this way, we can differentiate these drugs with a little difference in their suffix. So now let us go with the different types of drug suffixes with little differences. And let us see what is the little difference can indicate about the drugs and their mechanism. So let us start with the first suffix sept, C-E-P-T. You can easily remember it is coming from one of the term receptor. So the suffix sept indicates that drug is acting like a receptor. Normally drugs are going to bind to the receptors, but here the drug itself acting like a receptor on which few of the ligands can bind. For example, in the immune response, whenever these antigen presenting cells are going to identify the antigen and they are going to express one of the molecules. These are, these are the MHC2 molecules which are going to present the antigen that is going to be recognized by the T cells. Now these uh, CD4 T cells can bind to this antigen through this uh, MHC2 molecules where they can recognize the antigen and they can stimulate the immune response. But many of the times this immune response requires a co-stimulation. So here the co-stimulation can be carried by CD80 or CD86 cells which can be blocked by one of the drug having the suffix sept. Now this drug is having the suffix sept which indicates a false receptor. It can bind to the CD80 or 86 uh, cells and it can act as a false receptor thereby inhibit the co-stimulation. And when co-stimulation is going to be inhibited, the T cells cannot bind to this MHC molecules. So immune response can be inhibited. In this way, drugs can act as the false receptors so that they are going to modulate the physiological response. So here we have one of the suffix which is having the sept as the primary suffix which is prefixed by another term NER. So here the suffix NERCEPT indicates that drugs are acting like the tumor necrosis factor alpha receptors. So we have one of the drug etanerecept which is a false receptor for the tumor necrosis factor alpha. Similarly, the another suffix tacept, which is again having the suffix sept, but prefixed by letters TA. Now, the suffix tacept indicates the drug is acting as a cytotoxic lymphocyte antigen 4. So, from this, we can take the letters T and A. So, here TA indicates the T lymphocyte antigen. We have two drugs like the abatacept and belatacept. These drugs are acting like CTLA-4, cytotoxic T lymphocyte antigen 4, which are going to modulate the immune response by inhibiting the co-stimulation. In this way, we can observe the two types of suffixes which look similar. For example, nercept and tacept, but nercept is acting on the TNF-alpha and tacept are acting on the T lymphocyte antigen. 
So TNF alpha is one of the pro-inflammatory mediator which can produce the rheumatoid arthritis and other inflammatory conditions. This TNF alpha can bind with the TNF alpha receptors, but here we are going to use the Etani recept, which is having the suffix nercept, which indicates a TNF alpha receptor, but it is a false receptor. When this TNF alpha binds to these receptors, it will not produce any cellular activity, but it is going to prevent the action of the TNF alpha. In this way, Etani recept acts as a false receptor for the TNF alpha, thereby it inhibits the inflammatory response produced by TNF alpha. Similarly, if you have the drugs which are having the suffix tacept, or we have seen the abatacept and belatacept, they are going to inhibit the co-stimulation. They can bind to the CD80 by 86 cells and they are going to act like the CTLA4 and they are going to modulate the immune response such that they are going to inhibit this co-stimulation. When this co-stimulation is going to be prevented, the T cells cannot bind to this MHC complex, so immune response can be inhibited. In this way, abatacept and baratacept can act as the immunosuppressants. Next suffix is the AST. The suffix AST indicates that the drugs are indicated for the asthma. You can see that from the asthma, we can take the suffix AST. So if any drug is having the suffix AST, it indicates that the drug is a anti-asthmatic agent. So particularly the drugs which are acting on the asthma mainly act as the bronchodilators. So here one of the suffixes is the leucast. AST indicates that the anti-asthmatic agents and leucast. These drugs are going to acting on the leukotrain receptors. So we have two drugs here, the Montelukast and Jephilukast. These two drugs are cystine leukotrain receptor antagonists. Similarly, another suffix Milast. Milast indicates again it's an anti-asthmatic agent. We have one of the drugs Ruflumilast, which acts by inhibition of the phosphodiesterase type 4 enzyme. So here, these drugs are having the similar suffix AST but they are acting in different way. Even they are going to produce the same pharmacological response as bronchodilatation, but they are acting on the different drug targets. So now let us see how these leucast drugs are acting. The cystine leukotrienes are one of the important bronchoconstrictors. They can act on the few of the receptors, cystine leukotriene 1 receptors. When they are going to bind to these receptors, they produce a bronchoconstriction, release of the mucus, as well as they can also cause the infiltration of the eosinophils. These isnophils, when they are going to be infiltrated, they can produce a further bronchoconstriction. Now here the leucast drugs can act as the antagonist of the cystine leukotriene receptors. They can bind to this cystine leukotriene receptor 1, thereby they are going to prevent the action of the cystine leukotrienes. So here the suffix leucast indicates that the leukotriene receptor antagonist as well as they are anti-asthmatic agents. Similarly, phosphodiesterase type 4 is one of the important enzymes present in the bronchioles, which is going to metabolize the cyclic KMP into the AMP. Now this phosphodiesterase type 4 is going to be inhibited by a few of the drugs ending with the milast like the roflumilast and silomilast. These drugs are going to inhibit this PDE4 enzyme thereby they inhibit the metabolism of the cyclic AMP resulting in the bronchodilatation. So here these drugs are having the suffix milast which indicates that they are anti-asthmatic agents acting through the inhibition of this phosphodiesterase type 4 enzyme. Next suffix is the NIB. The NIB indicates the drugs are kinase inhibitors, particularly their protein kinase inhibitors. The protein kinase are the phosphorylating enzymes which are responsible for the cell signaling. As these drugs are going to inhibit the cell signaling, they can be used in the treatment of cancer as anti-cancer agents. So drugs which are having the suffix NIB, they are the anti-cancer agents. But again, we can find the different types of suffixes within this category. The suffix TNIB indicates they are the tyrosine kinase inhibitor. You can easily identify here from the tyrosine TY is converted as TI. So TNIB indicates they are the tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Lot of drugs are available as tyrosine kinase inhibitors like the imatinib, jefitinib, nilotinib and so many drugs are there which are having the suffix TNIB and here TNIB indicates they are the tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Similarly, we have another suffix rafinib. Rafinib indicates they are the RAF kinase inhibitor. RAF kinase is one type of uh, tyrosine kinase and when the drugs are specifically acting on this RAF kinase, they are having the suffix rafinib. So we have one of the drug sorafinib which again acts as an anti-cancer agent. Similarly, we have another suffix enib. What this suffix indicates? Here the letter A indicates these drugs are the protein kinase inhibitors which are going to inhibit the angiogenesis. So these are the angiogenesis inhibitors. What is angiogenesis? Angiogenesis is the formation of new blood vessels within the cancerous cells. As the cells are going to proliferate, they require the more nutrients. 
and cancerous cells are having the ability to form the new blood vessels by which they can get the oxygen as well as the nutrients so this angiogenesis is one of the important mechanism for the proliferation of the cancerous cells we have one of the drug pazopanem you can observe here the suffix is having the anib so a indicates the angiogenesis inhibitor this pazopanem can inhibit this angiogenesis thereby it can inhibit the proliferation of the cancerous cells and this drug is again a protein kinase inhibitor which is specifically inhibiting the angiogenesis